because rowing is rowing the erg, especially with the sliders I put that on there. It's like now we've created this, you know, that static, you know, before it was a static pressure, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? It's rowing. And if you can't row in the erg, you can't row in the boat. Because you will create a culture of, oh, I can't row in the erg. Team, you don't want that. And I've always said this, I mean, listen, there's some way that colleges go through the first round. They look at your SATs. Um, way back in the day when I was in business with a Norwegian company, this guy used, chose marketing director this way. I think colleges probably do this too sometimes. He had a stack of resumes, this is from marketing director, international marketing director. He uh, shuffled them up randomly, he split them in two piles, one pile went in the trash can. It was like, but Oscar, why, why did you do that? I don't want anyone working for me who's not lucky. <laughs> Right? That's what happens. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got, we got, um, I'm going to give you uh, one minute to do this one. This one, this exercise with the big red screen there. Um, this exercise is this. I would like for you to write down the, the, your vision of the rowing stroke, meaning I want you to, where does your rowing stroke? Everyone's thinking about this. While you're thinking about this, I'm going to put on, you know, I don't want to confuse you, nor do I want to lead you in any way. I'm just going to put this on in case we forgot what the rowing stroke looks like you know, in the last few days. I want you to spend one minute, I want you to write down what you have in your mind is the beginning and the end of the rowing stroke. Where does it start? Where does it end? You must write it down. Because if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. And then make a couple notes to yourself. What words would leave your mouth while you're in the launch to get someone to start from the point where you believe it starts at. Does that make sense? Right? The words that you would say, I'm not talking about novice rowers now because, good Lord, that, that could be anything, right? But people who already know the rowing stroke, what would you say, okay? Vision, what's it look like, beginning and end, and how would you get it started from your beginning point? What words would you use? Okay, another 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. How many people have done this before? Uh, yeah, a handful. I think it's fair to say that before you, it's kind of like goal setting, isn't it? Like if you don't have a vision of a rowing stroke, how are you, how are you, you know, that's kind of a question I have to ask. Then what model are you coaching to to get your kids to the next level? Because here's what I'm guessing you're saying. <laughs> It looks a little better than yesterday. We're coming along. In what way are you coming along? What's the model that you're using? Because if you don't have a benchmark, how do you get yourself to every day? Okay, I see that my vision of the catch looks like this, right? My vision of how this, this, this whole rolling stroke should look like is like this, and I've written it down, and every day I'm coming in, you so we're getting better in this area. Does that make sense, everybody? And I think if you can, and more than you, your assistant coaches, if you can sit with them, because if you're trying to have this continuum, and it is a continuum in your program, and a consistency across that continuum of the rowing stroke as you're developing it, as you're overlaying it on very athletic folks, well, then you're going to have a really good team. But if everyone's out there is just kind of going to whatever the issue is of the day, you will not advance yourself. So here's what I'm going to ask you. Because, you know, this is, the, this is the most frustrating thing at the national team, junior national team level. I have to ask yourself, what if you only had one regatta? You had one shot at this thing. What would you do? Because there's no, okay, we're getting a little bit faster now. I see we picked up some speed. Could we beat team B? 
But what if that doesn't happen? So now you need to set the level of quality as if none of those little benchmarks along the way measure. Does that make sense? And so now we're talking about absolute. It's not relative anymore. So I'm asking you to do the same thing we're asking the athletes to do. You can't go out there and say, oh, we're doing better based on what I've seen or who we've raised, but we're doing better because here are the absolute goals and we are reaching those benchmarks. And that is different. That is completely different. Okay, so now you can refine that, what you had. We're not gonna do it today, but I want you to get started. Go back, refine it, make sure that when you ask your assistant coaches, you'll be surprised at what will be on that piece of paper. You will be surprised. But it's a good, it's a good teaching and learning opportunity for you and your coaches. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. That's a great question. And this is the toughest part because it's all about the process, right? The process is more important. It's, I know it's tough. We got to win. You know, we got to go out and win. We got to do all this racing and stuff. But in the end, it's about the process, how you got there. Now, there's obviously lots of ways to set goals. And the goals that we can set, we have a couple different ways, right? And this is from the, you know, and I've, I've given you some links to some references that I use so you can go back and look. But if you have subjective versus objective, you know, of course, you can say, well, I'm doing my best, right? My goal is going to do my best. And you know something? That, for some of the kids, that's a fantastic goal. Like, I just need to get through this, whatever it is. I need to get done this, this, uh, this one-mile run, right? Oh, I got through it. That's fantastic. Good. You did it, right? But then, you know, then they can move maybe to an objective goal. And you can do the same thing with your team and how you work with your team. And now you can go down this path. These are some more ways, and people have talked about goals. Outcome goals, winning or losing, okay? Our goal is to win. Fantastic. That's a good one. How about stats-based? That's the performance-based. Same thing as objective. So you see different terminology used. And then you have the journey, as I call it, to process goals. There's a reason why we have ID camps. We have lots of numbers coming to us from people who have big ergs. And some of it's like, I like hot dogs, but I never want to go to the hot dog making factory. Right? Right? The reason we go there, because I do want to see how that score was, was uh, arrived at. Because if it's an ugly 2K, that's an issue. We've seen those ugly 2Ks, right? And we also see them get there the wrong way, right? You can get to 7.30 for a girl or 6.30 for a guy in lots of different ways. You know, I can go out so blistering fast and I'm hanging on by my, by my toenails and fingernails at the end of that piece, but I got that score, <laughs> right? And when someone sees that score, they're not necessarily thinking that that's how you got there, right? So we need to process is important. So process should be important to you, not just the number. And it needs to be specific and measurable. And here's what we're going to do. Because we don't have time, I do like this one. I keep it. I give it to kids. It's in uh, Rowing News, December 10. I know you all got it. Go back and take a look at it. Um, so we're going to jump ahead here a little bit. Open goals. And if your kids write this down, you can use this as a tool. You can then meet with your kids and say, hey, how are you doing those goals? I have it right here, right? And you each have a copy, and they can make notes on it. And you can, you know, twice a year. I know, like, collegiate coaches meet with their athletes typically twice a year. I don't know how many times they meet with yours. But it gives it a communication tool. Remember, I think some of you probably said on your two things coaches must be able to do is communicate pretty well. Well, here's a tool to help you get inside that athlete's head and find out. Maybe they have not set time-oriented goals. Maybe they're just not attainable. You're looking at an athlete that says, I really want to, you know, they're, if you use an erg for a second, you know, they're at uh, eight minutes. And they're putting there, my goal by the end of the year is to be at 710. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm with you here. But let's try to chunk this thing down a little bit so we can work with it and, and, and measure this and make it attainable. And now we're going to talk about owning changes. Um, and this is an important piece. And um, the reason is because you're all teachers. As you're coaching, you're teaching. We're going to go about five minutes over, OK, because of uh, our late start. But here's the thing, if you are coaching, um, you need to understand that these kids are learning in so many different ways, right, and many of you do. So if it's going to take a visual model to do it, if it's going to take a kinesthetic, if you need to come up with some, you know, uh, uh, um, thing that you can work with to show the rowing stroke, I don't really care, right? Maybe it has to be music, like how do you shift gears, like how these kids, you got one kid, two kids who are always kind of behind the, behind the swing, well, I mean, listen, these kids